G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is an incendiary launcher. Not to be confused with a Hellstorm missile launcher, although you can see where that weapon gets its inspiration from. This one is based off a real-life launcher called an M202 Flash, which means Flame Assault Shoulder. You can get Flash out of that. Just look here. The M202 was an American-made launcher that was originally developed around the mid-1960s to 70s, and the idea behind this launcher was we're going to replace the flamethrowers, because they found during the Second World War that all of those flamethrower guys, they were particularly at risk from being shot at, because, you know, being a flamethrower guy, you had to be at pretty much point-blank range to actually get those flames to reach out and touch your target. So that left you open to enemy fire. And secondly, they were carrying around a giant tank on their back, full of volatile flame of fuel. So if that goes up, you and anyone standing too close to you, you're toast. So that's not good. So in order to improve the survivability of your battlefield firebenders, they loaded all of that incendiary charge into a rocket, which you can fire from a safe distance. So you can sit back about 60 meters away from a machine gun bunker and shoot a couple of these rockets in, and, well, they're gone. You don't have to worry about that anymore, and you don't have to worry about any risk to yourself whilst doing so. Isn't that nice? In the end, they found that this weapon was too bulky to use anyway, and the ammunition was somewhat unreliable. I think at this stage, this thing has been fully replaced by the S'more anyway, so that's a particularly better weapon system, but the, that's not to say this weapon doesn't have some sort of cultural legacy, and I'm referring to the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Commando, where the main character played by old mate Arnie, uh, we don't have him today, we've got Lily, so at least we'll be able to understand her, but um, he, he picks it up, and he's, he gets ambushed by a jeep that comes behind him, so he quickly spins around, he shoots it, and all the blokes that were sitting in that jeep will go flying everywhere, and then he quickly spins around and shoots a big gate. I think that's about it. That's all you, you get, like, two seconds of this thing on the screen, and then that's it. That's his cultural legacy. And I think that's enough, because, well, that scene was iconic. Those, those old-school Arnie action movies, they're timeless. They're great. It's like he's playing on God Mode, though, because he's got an AK-47. He just never stops shooting, never has to reload it. So he's, he's put the TGM command in. Anyways, let's get to the attachments, shall we? Yes. First of all, we've got the receivers, and this is where it gets kind of interesting, because unlike the vanilla game missile launcher, you don't get receivers. You get ammo capacity receivers, but you get nothing quite like this. I'll talk about the ones that are important. You got the light frame receiver, which if you want to make this thing significantly lighter, that might be useful for a survival mode playthrough or a strength, a low strength character. That'd be great. Don't even think about the heavy frame receiver, because you get, what? Three extra damage out of it, that's no good. Got a calibrated receiver, which gives you better critical shot damage. Now, most of the damage that you're seeing on the card right now, that's from your, your projectile, your explosion, and not from the projectile itself. So, maybe not as useful. But the main one here, the hair trigger receiver, which gives you a rate of fire boost that is fairly significant. That'll increase your DPS to way over what you can get with a standard vanilla game missile launcher. So, it's a no-brainer here, all out DPS-wise, and then that's your strongest bet. Next, we've got the barrels. Now, you want to find a barrel here that will give you the longest range, so the long barrel or the heavy barrel appears to be the best here. If you can spare the carry weight, then that is well worth the extra range that you're getting out of this thing, because despite it being a rocket launcher and everything, it still has the same distance from your target will affect the damage that you do because reasons, perhaps for the projectile itself, but giving yourself better range will make it slightly better accurate or more accurate in VATS over a distance, so if you want to use VATS, then it's going to be a little bit more consistent. That's what you want. Next, we've got the grips. You can have a heavy grip, which will give you a better bash, which will increase the weight of the thing. You'd rather keep it light, so this one will give you a better AP cost, better overall, because well, why do you want to bash with this thing anyway? You need to be standing back from your targets, not right next to your targets, but there is a couple of other options here to get better bashing, but no, why would you? Apart from it kind of looking cool, because you've got a bunch of knives sticking on the front of your launcher, but next, we'll go over the sights. So you've got standard sights right there. It gives you sort of like a minigun anti-aircraft sight that happens. It's, it's kind of cool. Laser sight, which you'll aim from a dot in the middle of your screen. A reflex sight, which eliminates all guesswork and actually pointing where you're aiming, unlike the laser sight. Or a short scope, which I think is pretty much the maximum amount of scopage that you'd want to use on a weapon like this, because the projectiles are going to be pretty slow, so anything more than a scoped version is going to be slight overkill. But for sort of a more medium range distance, there's merit to be using 
a medium scope, but overall, Reflex Sight is a superior choice in my mind. Now, I've got a Legendary effect provided by Legendary Modification. If I throw on Explosive here, this is a projectile override, so it'll change the missiles into explosive bullets. It will make it hit scan, which is funny, but we can probably guess here that we're getting about 80 to 90 damage worth of ballistic damage from the projectiles and not the explosions. So you, you, maybe you're getting an extra couple of hundred or so if you want to use this thing with a critical receiver using those criticals. So mm, you could argue that there's some damage benefits, but I think the hair trigger receiver is going to be your strongest thing. And of course, you've got an accessory pendants that you can throw on. This one's got improved bash damage. Nah. Improved range. It's barely any range at all, so don't worry about it. Five damage resistors. Nothing. Don't worry about it. Improved intimidation chance. I've got no idea how much that is, but you know, if you want to roleplay as a hyper-intimidating Arnie character, you can do that. You can get a bit of chance. Uh, improved critical rate, better for those uh, critical tuned incendiary launches. Agility for faster reload speed. Obviously, that's going to be the strongest one pretty much every time. This one gives you improved critical damage. Again, better for use, utilizing these things with like a calibrated receiver. But that's our incendiary launcher. There's a couple of uniques floating around. I'll show you how to get them. Alrighty, quick comparison time. So this is just a vanilla game quad barrel missile launcher. I've put the hot rot shark paint on it because it's got the little little A10 what hog mouth on it. I thought that was kind of cool. But as you can tell, this one gives you more damage but with less rate of fire. The range is similar. The accuracy is rated higher on this one. But the main thing is this thing weighs 21 pounds and it's probably almost absolute heaviest. This thing is up to 40 and a half. Also, it's more valuable so the resale value is better so economically is also a better weapon so is that nice but yeah the main difference here this thing is going to be so much heavier so a little bit less um viable for a survival mode playthrough if you want to if you're worried about your carry weight of course but yeah there's merit to using this one that's cool our first unique is located in the pridwin on proctor tegan go into his shop weapon. inventory and you can find yourself black box which has the uh, Vampire's Legendary Effect. I would have to believe that with the explosion, hitting multiple targets at once will make this proc more than once per thing. So that's pretty nice. So the the uh, Vampire's Legendary Effect, pretty good there. It's also in a nice black paint as well. You love to see it. That's pretty awesome. But yep, there we go. There's our first. The next unique we'll find is located right here at the Roadside Pides Motel. It's a small raider camp just north of Natick Banks. You've got the Glowing Sea just here. So it's pretty much... Well, very, very far south down the map. And look out for this man. The rocket launcher guy is usually up here. But fortunately for me, he sort of stood still and let that projectile hit him. And as you can tell, when you fire this thing, it'll explode. But it's also got that residual fire damage that it leaves behind for a little bit of flavor. Um, it does have the extra incendiary legendary effect sort of attached to it. You will get a tiny little bit of burning over time. But it's, it's literally nothing. You can walk through that fire and you're just fine. A little bit of rads, but I'm sure that's just a coincidence. Anyway, so you'll find Nefarious Napalmer here. It's got a bayonet barrel, a heavy grip, so this one's made for Bastion. It's also got the Assassin's Legendary effect. Very useful against uh, men, dudes, humans. Not Also synths, because the game answers its own question whether synths are actually people or not. The incendiary, uh, the Assassin's effect works on synth courses, so... Way to take the mystery out of it, Bethesda. I don't believe them, though. Synths aren't people. The last one you'll find is located within Gunner's Plaza. Now, we've put together a cunning disguise. We've got a, um, a forehead gunner tattoo, so these guys shouldn't really be bothered by me. How do you do, fellow gunners? Great day in the Commonwealth, isn't it, for standing around wearing sunglasses inside? But anyways, what you want to do is go over to... The, uh, the main room where they do the recording, the on-the-air room where Captain Wes usually is. In this case, he's dead, but you'll find this. It's Commando. There you go. There's your Arnold Schwarzenegger reference, and it's got... Does more damage to lower your armor resistance. What is that? That's, um... Berserkers. Although it doesn't seem to penalize my damage for having armor resistance like I do, so that's cool. Um, anyways, uh... Good day to you. I'll go outside and... Oh, I just realized that the bangs in my hair are covering the tattoo, but I don't think they notice. Just run, 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 
Righto, now we're at the massive Gunners Plaza. This is on the outside, and here is what our launches look like. Yeah, we've already seen this one. Also, you'll notice how these things have the same reload animations as a quad barrel missile launcher from the vanilla game, which, as far as I'm concerned, that's A-OK, -okay because, well, if you're gonna repurpose animations, and it works for a launcher like this, then why not? A quick look at some of the other launches that I've got. This one's Black Box. I haven't taken these to a workbench to modify them because, well, you can't really improve them, so we'll just use them as they come from the shops. And here's what the standard iron sights looks like. Next, we've got the Raider one, the Ferris thing, with all the uh, bashing parts on it, which uh, blows up a car in two hits, which I don't know if that's going to translate to actual good uh, bashing damage when you get to targets, but we've got the Assassin's Legendary effect, so that'll be good to probably one-shot most enemies here with that extra damage bonus. And of course, we've got Commando here. It's got the scope on it. A lot of scopes way, but it's a heavy, unwieldy thing, so that's fine. Here's what we've got for our damage resistance. So instead of the 603, we're getting 582, which, you know, I've got some of the perks that increase that by 50 and energy resistance by 50. The rest of it is the energy shields. You see, it's rated for about 200 or so points of uh, resistance. Anyways, let's get started with our commando. We'll go sniper status version first because why not? And we're, we're the, we, we've been found. Perhaps we're getting a little bit less than I first anticipated from our commando version. So we'll just go over to the one I made. That's good. Got to kill that. I'm missing. There we go. That's a thousand damage. That's much better. Here, okay. So here's what I think I could do. I could, I could get a lot of kills very, very fast indeed, and a lot of crits if I hit multiple targets at once. That's over four kills by now. So therefore, it should be crits on everything from here on out. So if I can secure easy kills like this, well, that means. I could get crits for nothing. Let's wait for that missile to get there. I don't think it made it. I think I detonated it midair by shooting the thing that was closer to it. Yeah, it's, it's literally crits and everything. And as you can tell, it fills your crit bar right up just you're hitting stuff so rapidly. We're getting all of our AP back. Did I miss? Must have. Getting the, all the AP back fairly frequently because of the uh, massive amounts of kills that I'm getting as well through Grim Reaper Sprint. Yeah, VAFs with explosives like this. Oh, I don't know. It's kind of busted. So maybe we'll go over to our nefarious thingo. The, the spiky stabby one. 27. 300 for the critical. Okay, that, that's not that much. But with our Assassin's Legendary effect... We're going to be one-shotting everything anyway, so... Have at the... These guys have got no chance. See, they're caught in the blast radius. They're getting those little ones. That's like, what, the 15 incendiary damage. It'd be cool if you could um, tune this thing to give you a little bit more. I don't know if you could um, make it a different projectile. Produces a different explosion to ignite for a little bit more damage. But, yeah, it's going to be a pretty cruisy run with this thing. Are you punching me? If he really wanted to be safe, he would have stood right next to me, because then I couldn't shoot him without blowing myself up. These gunners are not the smartest. Anyways, maybe we'll go black box now. See, we're, we're a little bit injured, so we'll try to get some healing happening. Didn't hit much there. I'm coming for you. You just wait. As soon as I get myself unstuck, you're screwed. You're finished. Okay. We rolled. We flipped the coin and we got nothing. That's fine. We'll pop a fresh magazine in this thing. And we'll keep on going. I think we'll have a couple in there. Usually three in there for that little door breach moment. And one gunner down there. See, the, the problem with a weapon like this is, or not a weapon like this, a legendary effect like this is that I can't see whether I'm actually getting anything. I think I am. Well, okay, well that was weird. Someone said that's why I don't screw with the gunners. He must have killed like a Radstag or something. 
but yeah, having like a health bar of what was it again? Yeah, just under 1400 health. Uh, you're not gonna notice that little 20 points of extra health unless you're low level. Like getting to like what am I level one something? Well, you saw before. You get an absurd amount of health with a lot of um, endurance in the end game here because you, your character never stops scaling and enemies don't either. If you get to like level 13,000, the Mylurk Albino Mylurk dudes, they're pretty much invincible, so don't do that. Limit yourself. Or get some level scaling mods. Also, um, by default, it doesn't work with classic holstered weapons. Um, that mod, by default, um, doesn't actually allow you to utilize the heavy guns like that because a lot of them just don't work. But I'm thinking that like this thing would probably be able to work as a apparel item, but I can't demonstrate it here. So up until now, I haven't really been able to let this thing off the chain and just smash, smash the trigger as fast as I can press it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crouch and then I'm going to shoot this guy as fast as possible. And by the time I've reloaded, I think I'll have my those rockets wounded and even made it. And there we go. There's some uh, sneak criticals, I suppose. He's a pretty big boy, so I should hit most of these shots if I'm accurate if my aim is true and if he gets staggered there i could use that to hit him even further i could use vats too i've got all of these criticals ready to go so why not so that's what one seven ten seventy seven for those criticals which is okay i suppose it's not that much here we're getting a little bit out of range i think We've got some more criticals we could utilize. Ah, the criticals aren't used up until those rockets actually hit. Interesting. I'm trying to activate more criticals, but it's not happening. So I wonder if that means every shot, or at least until I hit, is going to be a critical. Who knows? That was a sneak critical, somehow. Still going, sneak criticals. I suppose I'll keep backpedaling. I can't really see where I'm aiming, so... That's much better. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Gotta be patient with my reloads. Make sure I don't click over and stop the reload. So this one's pretty much on ice. We all go home now. Job done. Maybe we'll just uh, get some extra criticals on him before we uh, head to our next target. It's surprisingly efficient on AP, and I think most of that has got to do with the, um, the lighter grip and, of course, the reflex sight, which normally your standard vanilla game missile launches, you don't get the ability to put that on. So that's worked out pretty well there, I think. All right. Well, that was good. Let's move on to the next monster. Again, I, I'd like there to be an option to increase your fire damage over time there as I start bushfires. I don't mean to be a fire bug. That kind of happens there. Never mind, the grass is too green, didn't burn anyway, we're fine. Alright, here's my chance for a little bit of more of uh, Vaf's tomfoolery. Actually, never mind, that chance just evaporated because whoever was around, I think you just killed them. There might still be some Feral Ghoul Reavers around. He usually spawns with a couple of Reaver cronies, so I'll send some missiles his way. Not that I've got a lot of AP left at this point. Yeah, well, that was alright then. We'll get a few more rockets down that way. A couple of those shots were boosted by gun through. But with, with the rate of fire on this thing, we can sort of keep him at arm's length fairly easily. And then, yep, no more bugs for me to shoot at. A little bit of a shame. But even if he does come close enough, I get a missile close enough to him. He's going to stagger and he's not going to like that. So I can just sort of hold him there and... As long as I don't do anything stupid, this fight is over. And unlike the swan, this guy's a little bit more susceptible to fire. Probably because he's a giant Wendigo fella. Sit down. You are finished, mate. Finished, I tell ya. And no. Let me dodge that one. Cup a little bit of poison damage there, but nothing to worry about. So... I've found with a lot of other, like, heavy guns with through explosives, some of them do struggle a little bit against the bosses like that, but this is an exception to this rule. This is crushing everything that I pointed at. All right, one last fight. We've got the crazed Myler Hunter, massive lobster, rock lobster. So, if you're wondering, this thing doesn't have a hair trigger receiver, and it still 
fires fairly fast, but if I use this version, this one's a little bit tougher than the ghoul, actually. Well, there you go. Just trying to get as many criticals as possible. <laughs> the mysterious stranger got immediately blown up. Classic. All right, let's keep him coming. Maybe we should add a critical there. Uh, actually, I've got an idea. What if I... Uh, I don't know. I was I was gonna like spam the critical button whilst the uh, missiles are going to land so I could get like a quick one, two, three, four punch on them, but I'm out of critical at this point. Oof. Oh, we are so finished with you, mate. Look at you on fire in the water. That is some potent incendiaries, I'll tell you that much. Alrighty, so kind of fucking around with that last thing, but I wanted to discuss something. Uh, at what time do I start talking about the Fallout show? Because I think. It's probably a little bit too early, like, maybe I'll wait for a, f a few more weeks before I start talking about the show and spoilers, but if- I'm thinking if you're it, it, watching this far, you've probably already seen the show, but if you haven't, then I won't speak of it yet. Um, if you haven't seen it, I haven't taken the time to watch it yet, it's actually fucking good, like, really good. Would highly recommend it, so go and watch it, because if you're a Fallout fan and you haven't watched the show or anything, I think you are missing out, because it is genuinely- one of, the, uh, one of the better TV shows I've seen. Not as good as Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul, but, you know, as a Fallout show that I am, I'm going to tell you, it's pretty good. <laughs> and, you know, Fallout is about a lot of things to a lot of people. Some people really love the building. Some people love the lore. Some people like the factions and the discussions. And there's weirdos like me that like gun-toting Barbie dolls blowing up things in the Commonwealth. But I draw the line at anime girls. So, anything is good. But if you play as an anime girl, you're fucking cringe. And on that... <laughs> This video is finished. This exchange is over. Thank you very much for watching. If you want this weapon in your game, check out the link in the description. It'll be down there. Bye. I'm tired.